What makes this one more challenging? Photograph. Try to get as good photographs as you can, but like it's hard to get it, like a side view of what the thing is like. And uh, so I get, I try to get something that's as close to a side view as I possibly can. People were asking me to do things like chocolate cars, full-size chocolate cars and things. And I just thought they were nuts. I, I couldn't imagine anybody, you know, I, you know it, was, it was hard to conceive of, of that. And now, you know, we've done them, you know, and uh, so after a period of time, you know, you make these things happen and you figure out how to make them happen. But it doesn't happen overnight. So when you're starting a cheese sculpture, it's a subtractive process. And so you want to um, kind of assess the size of the cheese, um, the size of the sculpture that you want to do compared to the amount of the cheese that you have. Okay, so that's one of the first things. And we had three blocks of cheese to start with. And so three separate blocks, which required us to stack them. And then um, in a way where we would be able to utilize, you know, uh, the volume of the cheese to its best advantage. Um, so basically we have two verticals on the bottom and kind of a horizontal on top and that's how we started. And we secure the cheeses together because when they're separate pieces like this, they'll tend to kind of come apart a little bit, you know, and that's what these gaps are for. Or what those gaps are about is those are where the cheese meets basically. Um, and so we kind of screw them together so that they will stay and then you're gonna uh, you're gonna have to pull some reference material of what you want to sculpt um, pictures from the internet for instance um, and then you basically will start drawing you probably will start right on the front and then just kind of draw some basic um, areas you know where the mouth might be where the hats gonna be where the eyes are gonna be where you think that the, you know other stuff is gonna be and um, and then go on a profile and kind of do the same thing. So you want to draw that. And when you draw on cheese, basically, I'm searching here for a tool. Um, it's going to be just a modeling tool, you know, kind of a loop tool like this. And so when you want to draw something, you're going to just basically kind of go right over the surface and draw your line like you were using a pencil. And um, you want to go lightly, you know, at first. Uh, but just be able to delineate, kind of, you know, just draw things like where the mouth is going to be, where the tongue is going to be. And later on, you'll be able to go deeper into those areas. So that's how it gets started. The gritty uh, portrait, the gritty head, has its own kind of intricacies, you know. And um, because there's a lot of movement, you know, you want to create movement, you know, with the hair, you know. Um, and so, um, and it's... It is kind of this Muppet, you know, kind of a feel, but, you know, it's not to be taken lightly because sculpture is in the round. So, um, I mean, you have to give it personality and you also have to give it kind of an appropriate kind of shape, you know. Um, so in the pictures, for instance, we can only see things two-dimensionally. We don't see them really all the way around. And so we have to kind of make things up as we go along, you know. Um, about what the shoulders are going to look like, what the back of the head is going to look like, and then, um, you know, just basically all of that stuff. So there's a lot that goes into it um, still, even though it's not a portrait of an actual person, you know, you want to be able to give the Muppet or the, you know, the, the thing um, personality. And so that's really the most important thing is giving it some personality.